Are you frustrated with the colors that are coming out of your Sony a6400? Do you feel like they're just, mm, just a little bit off? You're probably right. And it's probably your white balance. Today I'm gonna show you how to get correct white balance, but first, you gotta do me a favor. You gotta get yourself out of auto. Cause today, we're gonna teach you how to custom white balance your Sony a6400. To take your videos from looking like this, to looking like, like this. Thanks for coming. Let's do this video next. If you're returning to my channel, it's good to see you again. I appreciate you stopping by for another video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Brian, the camera guy. I review accessories and Sony camera gear. If you end up enjoying this video and you find value in it, I'd appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to properly white balance your videos. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video as I'm gonna give you a $7.50 tip that will help even the most beginner of beginners nail the correct white balance every single time. So I've been using the Sony a6400 now for about six months and it's a great hybrid camera. It does stills along with video. One of the things that does frustrate me is the auto white balance. The auto white balance can be a little bit tricky and sometimes comes off a little greenish tint. Sometimes it makes the skin tones look a little off. It can affect all aspects of your video. It can also make your image look a little unsharp, just not as crisp as it possibly could be. Also, not being able to properly white balance is a sign of a true amateur. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to correctly white balance and get yourself out of auto. So the main reason why you should get yourself out of auto white balance is your camera's like a computer. And basically what it's doing is it's taking all the colors that your camera sees and it's trying to make it look just like the way your eye sees. And it uses formulas and different algorithms to generate those colors. Now cameras can do a really good job of trying to nail that color, but nothing replaces the human eye. And there's no camera out there that has the same dynamic range as these babies. So if your colors look just a little bit off, they probably are, and it's probably not really your camera's fault. It probably has to do with like the environment and also your setup. They put the auto white balance on there, but there are ways to customize this. Now the tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you do apply to the Sony a6400, but they can work on all types of cameras from Canon to Fuji to Nikon. Basically any camera system that you have probably has some sort of custom white balance. And I'm gonna run you through how the Sony a6400 uses its custom white balance. So now there's a big difference between stills and video. Now with stills, you should be shooting raw that does capture the most detail, the most dynamic range. Now when you're shooting in raw, the white balance doesn't necessarily matter because you can always fix it in post. It might take you a little extra time, but you can definitely fix it in post. Raw keeps all that detail. Now when you're shooting video, like this one for example, I am shooting in a log profile. Now log does a great job of retaining a lot of that detail. If your colors are a little bit off, it's, not as easy to fix those. It definitely can be more time consuming and it's gonna definitely take you longer in post to get those videos out. So nailing the exposure, nailing the white balance correct in camera can save you a heap of time in the post processing. Last thing you wanna be doing is spending hours and hours and hours trying to get that color grade looking just right. You wanna be able to crank out these YouTube videos or maybe you're a dad creating home videos and you don't wanna waste a whole lot of time having to do a ton of color correction. So that's why it's important that you nail the white balance right from the start, get the exposure right, and, and just eliminate that headache for yourself. First thing to getting out of auto is we need to learn a little bit more about light and what it does for you. And, and don't worry, I'm not gonna make this overly complicated, but we are gonna talk about the Kelvin system. Sounds fun, right guys? See, light comes in different colors, in different Kelvin, ratios from orangish all the way up to bluish. So light does change based on the environment that you're in, based on what you are using to create that light, whether you're using sunlight or using studio lights, it can vary. And this Kelvin system is a great way to narrow it down. And it's also what your camera uses to try and figure out what colors are the colors. First, you need to know what type of environment are you shooting in? Are you shooting in those clear blue skies or is it cloud cover, sometimes referred to as God softbox? Or are you shooting in the shade? Or are you shooting under lights like I am right now? All these things make a, a tremendous difference in what Kelvin rating you're gonna be using when you shoot your videos. Now, if you're gonna be shooting in your house using 
just the lights that you have around your house, those are generally gonna be between 3000 and 4000 Kelvin. If you're gonna be outside and there's not a cloud in the sky, you're probably looking at 5000 to 6000. If it's shady, you're generally gonna be shooting between 6000 and 7000 Kelvin. And if you're in the shade, you're gonna be looking at 7000 or higher. Now I mentioned studio lights. So I have one set up right here. The bulb itself says it's 5,500 Kelvin. But when I white balance it, my camera is actually set at 4,800 Kelvin. And I've also tweaked a little bit on the colors. So I'm gonna run you through how you can do that right now on the Sony a6400. Now the Sony a6400 does come equipped with some auto white balance presets. It's got auto white balance, it's got daylight, it's got shady, cloudy, incandescent, it's got fluorescent warm light, cool light, day white, daylight, and some weird underwater auto white balance. I don't, I don't know what the difference is, but all I know is that what you wanna be using are the custom white balances. There's four custom white balances. There's custom white balance one, two, and three, and then there's also the color temperature and filter. So now that we reviewed the Kelvin system, you can now go into your white balance and you can set your Kelvin scale based on the environment that you're in. So if you're outside, you want, you want that 5,000 to maybe 7,000 range. If you're inside under normal lights in your house, like I said, about 3,000 to 4,000. But what you wanna do is you wanna be able to use what you now know about the Kelvin system to your advantage to try and get the best image possible. So one of the ways that you can figure out the correct white balance is you can put your camera into movie mode. Once you're in movie mode, then you're gonna wanna go down to one of those custom white balances. Now, if somebody's wearing a gray shirt, which if you ever noticed, a lot of YouTubers tend to wear gray shirts or they have some sort of gray wristband or something gray that they can white balance off of. Because not only can you white balance off a of white, you can also white balance off something gray. So what I've done is I've set up in my function menu, my white balance is right in there. So I can easily go in and I can change the white balance very quickly, right from that FM button. Because you're in movie mode, you can go right to custom one, two, or three. So you're gonna press right and then you're gonna hit set and then you'll see that little circle pop up. Put something gray or something white into that box and go ahead and press that set button. And once you do that, it's gonna give you the readings of what the correct white balance would be. You're now gonna go ahead and either save those into your camera or just save them up in your mind. We'll come back and use those in one second. Now the reason why I'm telling you to save those is generally, I'm not sure if you're like me, but I use the MR setting a lot on my Sony a6400. I auto programmed 4K 24 frames a second and also 1080p at 120 frames per second. That's very important for me because I wanna be able to switch very quickly from 4K24 to 1080p 120. If you want me to do a video on how I set up those memory recall settings, go ahead and do me a favor, comment down below, and I'll go ahead and I'll get that video set up. If that video is already done, it'll be up in the cards above. I'll also link it down in the description below. Unfortunately, if you're using the memory recall, you cannot use the custom one, two, and threes. Now you would have to set those in movie mode. You would have to re-register your profile so this way it would be in there automatically. That's why I'm saying if you memorized or just remember the white balance that the camera had told you when you were in movie mode, you can now go into the color temperature and filter, go over to it, go ahead and hit that right button. You can now change to the Kelvin setting that is proper based on the area that you're in. And you can also hit the right button one more time, slide over and pick the filter. I generally shoot an HLG2. I have it set to the Rec 709. So generally I'm shooting at M4 to M1. So somewhere in that range. Now the good news is, is because I'm teaching this, you can now try and get your white balance as close as possible. This way you can get it looking as close as possible to your human eye. Use the back of the screen obviously to try and help yourself. Even if you had nothing gray or white, you can still get it very close. Now I did promise you a $7.50 tool that can help make this process a whole lot simpler for you. So let me go ahead and introduce you to Mr. Gray Card. So this is a great card. You can pick one of these up on Amazon for $7.50. I do have a link down in the description below. So you can use that link. It is an affiliate link. By using it, it does help support my channel. But this is a great card. So as you notice, it does come in a gray. And if you flip it over, it does come in a white. So you can use this to set your white balance. So it's only $7.50. Um, now it does fold up into a nice little, nice little package so you can Tuck that away in your pocket if you absolutely need to. It does come with a 
package that you can slide it right into once you have it folded up. Like I said, it's a $7.50 tool that can help you white balance. Also, if you forget to custom white balance, hold this up in the beginning of the video and in the post process, you can try and white balance off of this as well. So if you're gonna use this thing, like I said, go into movie mode, go to one of those custom presets, one, two, or three, and go ahead and set your white balance off of this. Trust me, it's gonna save you a heap of time in the long run. $7.50, I mean, you can't go wrong. It works. So there you have it. That's my quick way to white balance any video. Makes it look a little bit sharper, makes those skin tones just the right color, and it just makes your videos look a lot better, and it makes it look a lot more professional. Do me a favor, comment down below if you wanna see other tutorials on ways that I set up my Sony a6400. Based on your feedback is I will determine what video I'll do next. If you found value in this video, I'd appreciate it if you pop that like button. Subscribe to see more, hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on my future videos. If you wanna see another video about the Sony a6400, click right here. If you wanna see another video from my channel, click right here. It's a YouTube pick. Let me know how they do in the comments of that next video. Thanks for dropping in and I'll see you in the next one.